Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it is our favorite time of the week. It's time to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, we're starting things off this week with a couple of new exclusives. Uh, a couple new exclusive Civivis, both with S35 VN steel. We've got kind of an ebony and ivory thing going on here. We'll start with uh, the Badlands Vagabond. You guys know I love this knife. This is one of my, in, it, in its base form uh, of about 40 bucks, it's one of my favorite affordable knives on the market right now. It's got a very balanced, cohesive design. It's got a very useful blade shape. And with Civivi's level of fit and finish that you get, you truly are getting a lot for your money. Now, this version right here features a significant bump up in steel from the 9CR that the base model has. We've got, as mentioned, S35 VN particle steel. Very high performance stuff. And on top of that, the blade is even just fractionally thinner than the base model too. So not only do you have more edge retention, significantly more edge retention, I should say, you've also got an even more efficient cutting experience, which is pretty cool. We've got a deep hollow grind, very thin edge and a nice swedge along the spine to remove some drag from that area. And this is just one of those nimble knives that moves with you. I've always appreciated that. We've got white FRN handles here, helping keep the cost down a little bit versus some more expensive materials. And the cool thing about the white here, not only does it look good against all the, uh, the black hardware, but this is also a fantastic thing to uh, dye if you wanna make, uh, make it your own color. And we're gonna have a video on that real soon, actually. Pretty awesome knife. Liner lock, ball bearings in the pivot. You've got a flipper and thumb studs for opening and just a truly crisp action. Deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible for either side. $79.50 for this knife. Next up, we have the Cogent, a button lock flipper. And as far as I know, this is the first uh, upgraded blade steel variant uh, that has been released of this particular knife, uh, rather than the Sandvik 14C28N, we've got S35VN, like I mentioned. So standard versions of this knife feature a Sandvik 14C28N blade, which is actually a steel I'm a uh, pretty big fan of, but it is not a particle metal like the S35VN, so you've got more premium stuff right here. Uh, and the jump up in price is not as dramatic as the Badlands Vagabond even. Uh, about 70 bucks for the standard versions. This exclusive right here, 97.75 right now. So a very good price for an S35VN button lock flipper these days with actual wood handle scales. These are ebony wood scales, hence the you know, ebony and ivory thing that I was talking about right there. Uh, clip point blade, three and a half inches thereabouts, high flat grind, thin enough. You've got a great slicer right here, good piercing qualities with that tip as well. The handle is enough for my slightly larger than average hands. I've got all four of my fingers on there reversible deep carry clip, and then of course, fall shut button lock action, which is really cool. It flips open real nice on the ball bearings. You can also do the wrist flick open, just hold that button down when you do it. This is gonna be awkward trying to show the, hey, there you go. Um, anyway, very, very cool knife. Uh, about the same price as the uh, Damascus versions, but you're gonna get a significant bump up in performance versus that uh, Damascus version too. Very, very cool. Both of these knives from Civivi, very high value knives, especially considering that blade steel at these prices in this day and age. Definitely check both of these out. Next up, we've actually got two Benchmade exclusives to talk about. We have a full-sized, two full-sized uh, knives, uh, the full-size Crooked River and the full-size Barrage both of them with natural G10 and M4 blade steel. Very cool combo. So we'll start with the Crooked River, uh, about 297 for these. You've got four inch blade, M4 steel, like I said, so really good toughness out of that material, uh, especially on a folder like this. You've got the strength of full liners and the hardened axis lock bar right there, combined with a steel like M4 that definitely has very high 
toughness and high edge stability too. Really good stuff for a hard use folder. Black coating is gonna help prevent corrosion because this is of course a non-stainless. You'll just have to watch out for the edge and the logo marks, make sure to keep them dry. Uh, you know, that way they won't start to corrode on you. Full-sized handle, even if you're wearing gloves, big-handed folks should have plenty to hold on to with this knife. Standard black split arrow pocket clip. It is reversible, which is nice because everything else on this knife is ambidextrous too. The axis lock bar, you can do the wrist flick thing as well, or of course you can be a little more deliberate with the thumb studs and a slow roll close. The aluminum bolsters here are a satin color and we've got that Jade G10 or that natural G10, which also can accept uh, RIT dye very nicely, the RIT dye synthetic stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit different in character from the, uh, the white on the uh, bad lens that we looked at earlier, but this has also always been a very good candidate for aftermarket, or uh, not aftermarket. Customizer. End user customization, there you go. Now these aren't gonna stick around forever. You see these are also limited edition right here. Uh, essentially what you had happen here is Benchmade has recently kind of pared back some of their customized knife options. You used to, uh, well you still can, but you can go to Benchmade's site and you know, build some custom versions of a few of their knives. The cost is pretty significant, but they recently have kind of pared down some of the options there and with some of their leftover pieces, that's how these two knives came about. Next up, the Barrage follows the same formula as uh, this Crooked River, essentially. M4 steel, natural G10. The price on this one, uh, about 243. Blade itself is 3.6 inches long, so a little bit shorter, a little bit slicier overall, I tend to think, too. You've got this drop point, eh, almost even a spear point profile here. High flat grind, very aggressive swedge. Let's see the blade stock. Initial thickness is about the same, and the grind height, so the grind height's actually technically a tiny bit lower, so it may not actually be slicier in a straight cut, but that swedge at the top is gonna help if your cut has to follow any kind of curve a little bit. So it's a little bit of a trade-off either way. I don't know, the, the swedge makes it feel like the blade is a little bit thinner, but it's not really. Um, but a very cool blade shape nonetheless, whether you wanna use it for tactical uses or EDC, great shape. And the G10 handles on this, I think completely transform the feel of this knife versus the uh, injection molded standard versions of this knife. It has a beefier, more hand filling grip. The handle shape is nice and neutral. So lots of different hand sizes are gonna have no problems with it. Not quite as large as the full size Crooked River, but probably plenty large for most folks. Split arrow clip, reversible, ambidextrous thumb studs, and the axis lock as well. A Little bit slower to close because this is still an assisted opening knife. So you just push that thumb stud out of the way and the spring takes over once you've got it part way open. So you've got that very consistent and repeatable action. Very, very nice. Spine mounted safety is gonna allow you to lock that crossbar into the open or into the non into a non-moving position, <laughs> whether the blade is open or closed. So you can't accidentally disengage that. And it's also nice when, if you've got it thrown into a pack or something like that, the blade is not gonna come open as long as this switch remains in the locked position. So that is very cool and a very cool knife as well. All right, we'll keep the, uh, the kind of greeny handle thing going here. Uh, with the latest version of the Native 5 from Spyderco. This is their LC200N salt version of this knife. Price about 143. Made in Golden, Colorado, as you can see on the back here, you've got their salt series construction here, which means that the blade steel, as well as pretty much everything inside uh, that handle construction is designed to be as corrosion proof as possible. Uh, the LC200N is like 99.9% .9 corrosion proof. Uh, it is really, really effective stuff in that regard. And a really nice steel. It's one that I've used on a couple Spydercos and I really enjoy it. Good toughness out of it. Good enough edge retention. It's not a, a super steel level edge retention, but it is pretty darn good. And the edge stability itself, I think, is really good on this steel. And that's something where sometimes people will ask me, you know, why do you need a super tough steel? on a pocket knife and you don't. 
Uh, some people opt to go for you know, stuff with more edge retention at the expense of the toughness. But where toughness can be really nice is you can get a nice thin edge that is very durable. I'm not talking about abrasion resistance, but if you're pushing into harder materials, especially if you're twisting at all, I've had to do this with an LC200 end knife on hardened timber. I was trying to cut a notch out of it uh, for reasons that shall remain undisclosed. But a lot of lateral stress was put on the edge itself and the LC200N stood, stood up great. Whereas with a more, you know, a less tough steel, you might worry a little bit about chip outs. That's the advantage of a tough steel on a folder. So depending on the uses you subject your folder to, you might wanna opt for something like this. Three inch blade, LC200N, like I mentioned, full flat grind on that leaf shaped blade. Full grip, thanks to that signature Spyderco finger choil up there at the front. So you've got plenty of length when choked up right there. Even a good enough length if you're choked back for most folks. Uh, if you've got really big hands, maybe not, but slightly larger than average hands, like I mentioned, three and a half finger grip for me, but even just three fingers with the pinky hanging off the back feels very secure. This knife is also completely ambidextrous. We've got a four position pocket clip, so you tip up or down on either side. The thumb hole, of course, is completely uh, operable the same way from either side, and then the mid-mounted lock back is also not biased to either side. Fantastic little EDC option. The green is highly visible in a marine environment especially, that's why they chose that color. But it's also just so nice to see something that's not another black handle, I gotta be honest. We see a lot of knives here, Thomas and I, so. Do we ever. When you, uh, when you see something that stands out a little bit, it always makes us smile a little bit. Uh, you've also got plenty of texture on the handle here. If you're working around water, that uh, injection molded handle with the bi-directional texture there, texturing there is going to help lock your grip in, or just any kind of you know slippery environment or slippery situation, you got tons of grip there. Very, very cool knife, and in stock right now, you can also get it in a serrated option. All right, next up, we have got the return of the box butcher from Andre de Villiers. The ADV box butcher comes in about $99 for this D2 steel version. Uh, it is, I believe, uh, made in South Africa. Yep, it is. Uh, he is South African after all. Uh, D2 steel, you've got technically a three and three quarter inch blade here, but the actual sharpened edge uh, is gonna be a good bit less. Uh, we're dealing with about, two and three quarters of an inch on the cutting length. Because of course you've got this large finger hole right here, which goes a long way to making this otherwise short handle feel very secure. It's kind of a three, really a three finger grip for me. I can just get my pinky on there a little bit, but the way it tapers, it's not really adding too much to my grip. You've got a very secure hold over this aggressive sheep's foot blade thanks to that finger hole right there. And this is going to as the name suggests, just have a lot of fun ripping through boxes. You've got a full length fuller on each side. It's gonna add a nice pinch point if you're choking up to do some real fine detail work. And of course, it just looks cool as well. And that's one of the things that, you know, ADV knives are always great at, just looking awesome. And this certainly does that. Uh, the sheath also actually looks pretty cool. We've got a faux carbon fiber-like Kydex snaps in quite easily. You've got a tech lock style, so you can carry it inverted, horizontal, any pretty much any way you wish, as long as the holes, or uh, you match the holes up to the holes on the sheath. And you can adjust your belt size with these spacers, clip it on, and then slide this button over, which will prevent that from unlocking. So it's pretty darn secure on your belt. So you can always have this strong utility knife on you while you work. A few different versions, we've got uh, Micarta's, Natural G10, a few different options, check them out. Next up we have another knife, kind of in a similar vein, but a different style and a different use case entirely, I'd say. This is the K9 from ADV. It comes in about 190 uh, for this D2 bladed version. Three and three quarter of an inch of blade and double edged, you've got a, the bellied section here is plain edged and the recurved or hawk bill section, if you kind of turn it around, is fully serrated. So you've got a lot 
of edge baked into this design. Obviously, this feels a bit more tactical than the utilitarian box butcher. You've still got that index finger ring for a lot of retention. And the micarta handles here, I think, feel especially good. Natural micarta, you've got a good shape. It's not just a flat slab. And the positioning of the kind of finger grooves as well allows a firm, full grip. Haven't held it inverted yet. Let's check that out. Yep, feels good too in that orientation. But throw it back into the front way. You got some jimping here. Technically, that's not jimping. Technically, that's crenellations, I would say, because they're kind of shaped out like that. There's probably a technical reason why we wouldn't call it jimping, but it's jimping. You know what I mean? But it gives you a little bit of extra traction because the last thing you want is for your finger to slide forward onto those serrations, I would say. Uh, but pretty cool. Uh, two versions of this uh, that we have left of this right now on the day we're filming. We've got the natural and a jade G10. Similar style of Kydex sheath with the same type of Techlock style attachment on the back. If you're interested in this though, and it's a little bit out of your budget, we actually are running a giveaway on this knife right now. There's going to be a link in the description of this video, which will take you over to the page where you can sign up. All the, uh, the rules and regs will be there, but you could potentially win one of these. I think we're giving away one of the, uh, the Jade G10 versions. So very cool knife. Make sure to check that out. Next up, we have the War Junkie Citadel from Todd Bag Knives. We teased this uh, a while back. They are they have finally landed uh, 450 bucks for this particular knife. These are, well, some folks might refer to this as a mid-tech. It's more of a you know, high-end production knife. We've got a four inch S35 VN blade, high satin finish inlays on the blade itself. You've got a carbon fiber surround around the blade cutout on each side. It's a bit of a distinctive look. Uh, the handles are titanium also with carbon fiber inlays, a very kind of intricate carbon fiber inlay, actually. You've got this milled line in the titanium and the carbon, the inlay wraps around that. So kind of a lot going on there, actually, from a uh, manufacturing standpoint. Blue accents on the liners and the pocket clip, and it is one of those very hand-filling grips. You could definitely, it's pretty comfortable, actually. You could probably push this into a, uh, into some heavier tasks without as much of the discomfort as you, you know, tend to get from folders in general if you're comparing them to a fixed blade. This feels really good in that regard. The action is very nice. You can see it falls shut pretty easily right there. You do have ball bearings in the pivot. Check out kind of the chunky nature of this, this whole thing overall. Definitely has that overbuilt feel. Very easy flipping. Haven't tried to uh, actually thumb flick this and I'm not going to be able to <laughs> just notice how little that cutout is actually showing from the handle right there. But no matter, it certainly flips well enough. I like that blade shape. It kind of reminds me a bit of the old uh, SOG buoys in a way. Really cool. Next up on the, uh, the premium train, we have the Michael Zeba 6. Uh, may look a little familiar while also being wholly different than the, his MS3 design, which the MKM Flame was based on. It's kind of the same aesthetic, but a little bit bigger. Uh, this is a $395 knife. The blade is a little bit over three inches long. Very distinctive styling. There's several versions of this, some uh, more, even more out there than this particular one. I really like this uh, kind of topographic laser etching on the titanium frame here. Kind of a faux hamon look on the blade. Speaking of which, MagnaCut blade steel. Very, very cool stuff. Really cool pen-like profile here, uh, but opposed to the standard uh, drop point version of like the MS3, got this harpoon tip to give it a little bit more attitude. And it's pretty cool. You've got a full flat grind on the blade. The swedge itself is actually hollow ground. So you've got a lot of reflectivity off of that black coating right there and a very cool look as mentioned. Speaking of cool look, check out that pocket clip. That is a devil tail, Devil's whip tail, something or other right there. Really like it. No visible screws from the outside either. The, the clip itself attaches from the inside, which is quite cool. Blade itself, much like the MS3, can't even see anything but the flipper tab when it is in that closed position. 
this is going to be a very easy knife to carry because it is so narrow and so generally light. Uh, it's not an ultra light knife, but actually kind of is 1.98 ounces for all that solid materials. That's really nice. And the flipping action feels great. Uh, one of my favorite things to do with the MS3 is to do the, uh, the lighter flick with the thumb. And that still feels great on this guy as well. Very cool. Check them out. Uh, we are limited to what we have on hand at the moment. I don't know if we're going to be able to get more of these when they are out. So don't wait too long. All right, next up, uh, I can kind of talk about these three together. We've got uh, new versions uh, of the from Chavez's Ultramar 229 series. Uh, we've got the Liberation and the Street Sanger. Two, two different blade shapes, essentially, right there. Uh, we'll start with the uh, Liberation 229. Prices on these were about 345 for G10 and 375 for the full titanium knives here. Uh, full titanium handles, I should say. The blades aren't titanium. Uh, these are made by Riot, so the quality is world class, absolutely. Uh, 3.6 inch blade, M390. You've got the drop point with the high flat grind right there. And you've got the Tonto profile with compound grinds, hollow at the, uh, the back and flat at the tip. Interestingly, the Tonto profiles, as you can see, have a little bit more almost a full finger choil there. If you've got fat fingers like me, you're a little crowded on it, but it is definitely more space than the drop point versions right there, as you can see. Lockup is super tight on these, always has been. You've got ball bearings in the pivot. You've got a titanium lock bar with a really fine cutout. Every time I, I show one of these Chavez knives, I always like to point that out because it's just it really shows the precision going into this knife. Skull pocket clip, but if that is not your thing, there is included with, which e with each of these a more subtle flat clip, and you can kind of we'll throw it here on the top. You can kind of get an idea of what that looks like without me actually uh, installing it right there. So there you go. Can't install both at the same time, though. Although you could if you got your own hardware, I guess. Perhaps. Would not recommend, but one could, but should one. Really cool knives. I love the kind of clean head-on profile of these. It's got a nice classic look to it, and it certainly is up there in the fit and finish department with those other famous titanium frame locks of the world. You guys know what the ones I'm talking about. Uh, the G10 is a good option. You've got G10 on the front side, titanium on the back if you want a little bit more traction. It's not, you know, Emerson aggressive, but you do have a bit more than the stonewashed finish on the other versions. And then we also have the Sanger, like I mentioned, but like the pricing, the handle is the same on these. It's just a different blade shape, that being this Warncliffe profile. You get, according to our website, you get a tiny bit more length out of it. Yeah, I gotta say, it looks about the same. We say 3.75, but each of these are, are the same, I would say. Um, kind of a saber height flat grind on this bit more stout on the actual cutting geometry here, but a very aggressive tip on these. Whether you're using that for piercing or dragging cuts, a lot of precision and a lot of piercing capabilities right there. 375 for the all titanium handle right here. As I mentioned, you've got the skull pocket clip and the more subtle flat clip if you want to uh, not shout about it as much. There you go. Next up, we've got a couple of cold steels. First, people have been waiting for this ever since uh, they showed this at SHOT Show for sure. The Engage, they, I believe they called it the Drifter at SHOT Show. Um, I don't remember, it was a busy day. It was a very busy day. But of course, uh, CRKT already has a knife called the Drifter, so they had to uh, alter the name there, hence Engage. Uh, 166 for this knife, three and a half inch S35 VN blade with that distinctive clip point shape going on. Yeah, two thirds height flat grind, we'll say. G10 handles and the Atlas lock, which operates kind of similarly uh, in, terms of its, in terms of how you operate it to something like the Snex Super Lock or the Demco Shark Lock. Uh, this is not an Andrew Demco design despite his uh, heavy involvement with Cold Steel in the past. And they go through a little bit um, in some of their literature you can actually see right here as well, two stop pins, and this lock bar is kind of forked and it engages 
over both of those pins for some pretty stable lockup. Now the lock bar itself does have to, or the lock bar release does have to move further back the handle a little bit in order to facilitate that. And I, I kind of thought this at SHOT Show too. It works on a knife this size, it starts to get a little more finicky or fiddly to use on smaller knives. But on this one, it's working pretty well. You don't push down like a lockback, you pull back towards the spine. Consequently, you're gonna essentially wanna close this every time with that wrist flicking motion because it's kind of hard. I've not really found a good way to disengage that lock back and move it, move the blade with a finger more slowly. It just kind of doesn't want to work that way because you're too far away from it. So there is enough handle behind this lock where you can still do that. You can see why smaller knives might be a little more tricky. You can open it the same way too. You can flick it open. I like that it's finger safe. Your fingers never cross the path of the blade when that knife is unlocked and closing, unless you're doing something wrong, but you don't have to. Uh, if you're operating it the way it's intended, very safe. Thumb studs can also open it if you're not into that flick sort of thing. You've got not so much a finger choil, but you've got a finger choil, <laughs> even though it's not a finger choil in the blade. Uh, the Aggressive guard on the handle right there, combined with the small choil on the blade itself, combined to a significant finger space. Plenty of room right there. You can get up closer to the tip, a little bit more control over that. But when you're back on the handle itself, all four of my fingers fit on there, no problem. You've got some aggressive finger guard protection from sliding forward with that design. Always something I appreciate on a heavier use knife. Speaking of, heavier use knives. We got a big one. This is the Lynn Thompson signature edition of their Leatherneck buoy. Um, I can say it's a buoy because it's bigger than any of the other Leathernecks we've seen so far that I can remember. About 160 for this knife. The blade itself is about 10 and a half inches long. You've got that classic kind of Mark II fighter inspired shape, which this whole series was inspired by. Thickness on the blade itself is about 3 16th of an inch. You've got D2 steel. Actually, as you can see right here, it is German D2 steel, which is kind of cool. Um, really like the dark stone washed finish on it as well. It gives it kind of this apocalyptic vibe, vibe, which I like. Rubberized handles over the full length tang. Uh, OD green in this case, it's got some good traction. So if you're using this in a heavier chopping, hitting scenario, You've got some shock absorption built in right there. The dual guards right here are curled towards the tip or angled towards the tip a little bit. As such, it's gonna kind of fulfill those combative needs. Might get a little bit in the way if you wanna use this as a camp knife. You can still get in there and carve with it if you need to, but if you wanted to engage in any other kind of grips, especially choking, like even pushing your thumb on the spine here, that's gonna get in the way in that sort of thing. But other than that, man, this is just a really, really cool knife. The sheath itself is Securex in grand cold steel tradition. Clicks in similar to Kydex. You've got a rivet and slot arrangement on the edges of this. So all kinds of different aftermarket attachments will work if you don't want to use the nylon drop loop that it comes with. But that drop loop comes with an extra retention strap at the top and Velcro and snappable belt loop on the back. So you don't have to remove your entire belt to actually put this knife or carry this knife with you to take it on the go. All right, next up, I showed you last week, I think it was last week, the micro tracker from Boker. Now we have the full size tracker has finally joined the triumvirate of this series. Uh, this is a knife designed by Dave Winger, but very closely, very heavily, and obviously influenced by the Tom Brown tracker, of course. But it does things a little bit differently. Uh, the blade here, we've got 7.2 inches, 1095 carbon, about 120 on the price. So pretty, uh, pretty reasonable for what you're getting here, materials-wise and complexity-wise. Micarta handles, they feel very good. I'd probably go in and contour them just a little bit more to fit my own hands, but it doesn't actually need it. That could be just like the next thing that puts it over the top for me. Triple flared tubes for lashing, makes it a survival knife after all. 
and a little bit more kind of an elongated and almost kukri uh, blended shape to the uh, classic tracker profile. You do have the straight edge section with the hollow grind here at the back, works well for small work. You've got the quarter round section right here, also works when pulling through some material, you engage a lot of aggressive edge there. And I know folks that can use this section really effectively for making feather sticks as well. And then the leading bellied section is flat ground for more strength for the kind of chopping stuff you're gonna want to do. Now, one of the things that some people complain about on the original tracker design is the sawback profile that you normally see right here. Boker and Dave Wenger went in kind of as far of an opposite direction with this as they could. Not only did they eliminate the sawback on this section of the spine, they've also crowned it for more comfort. Because that's, ultimately, there's a couple of things you can do with a tracker profile where this crown spine is going to be an advantage. One is draw cuts. There's plenty of length here if you know what you're doing, and of course, be careful to engage the uh, tip of the blade with your non-dominant hand and use this in a draw knife scenario. And the other would be batoning. If you need to split some wood in a survival scenario, that sawback could really bang up your, uh, your heavy stick that you're using to drive the knife through the wood. So if you have the smoother crown section here now, no longer a concern. Best thing is if you like the sawback, just go get the tops version. But if not, now we have this option. Uh, sheaf is down here. It is Kydex. It comes with uh, Boker's kind of J-hook style of attachment. Uh, but again, thanks to the riveted and slotted construction here on the edge of this Kydex, your tech locks will work, all kinds of other aftermarket stuff will work too. And you can take that exactly with, you can take that with you exactly how you want to. All right, that's all we've got for this week. Make sure to let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description to take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our Knife Rewards program. When you place an order, you're gonna be earning some free money to spend on your next purchase. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and that's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.